All right, I wanna go over an exciting update at Edison Motors, and mainly that is the diesel motor that is going into our trucks. I'm pleased to announce that we're going with Scania. After we did our trip to Europe, we met with Scania. We were so impressed with their build quality, their service, everything to do it, that when we looked into them, we absolutely decided that Scania is the right company for us to work with. They've got nine liters all the way up to 16 liters with 770 horsepower. 500 kilowatts that blows me away it's that's way more power than pretty well any motor you can get in north america to all the way down to the hybrid nine liter like it's just an incredible option incredible engine very reliable and over this video i want to give a big thanks todd warren from Colicut, a scania representative came out to the shop to answer some questions we filmed that interview for some of the commonly asked questions of what are the motors? I kind of nerded out about the 770 a little bit. Uh, I'll talk about nine liters. We asked about parts, service. What are they in in North America? Are they available in North America? They do need emissions. And then we go and pick our motor up. So if you're interested in learning about Scania, why we went with Scania, hope you enjoy this video. I'm the Scania representative for Western Canada and we're here to put Scania engines into Edison Motors trucks. We learned one thing was going to be uh, one thing from our trip in Europe. We got to go with Scania. Now to answer some of the questions, we got Todd Warren here from Scania. He's one of the distributors, sellers here in Canada and we just wanted to ask those frequently asked questions. What is it going to be like putting a Scania 770 in an Edison truck? Yeah, I'm Todd with Colicut. I started my career back in with Precision Well Servicing, working on the well servicing side. Did a bit of work on the drilling side. When I was at Precision, we were trying to find a good engine platform that would work for our service rigs. We came across Scania, we kind of felt the same way. That's the right engine for a product like that. We decided on that engine, and that was about seven years ago. So I worked for two years to apply that engine into service rigs, and then I ended up joining up with Colicut to be the distributor for Scania and have worked on many projects to get that engine incorporated into many different in pieces of equipment throughout the years. Okay, well, we were over in Europe. We were super impressed with the Scania trucks, mainly, especially that Scania powertrain, that engine. They're running 770 horsepower engines in Europe to move 44 tons, and we're hauling 60 plus tons, 20 tons more with only 550. So I think we really, need to have a look at bringing these Scania trucks in there. And Scania has been around for a while, eh? Yeah, so Scania has been around since 1891. They've got a huge history. They were in North America back in the 70s in case tractors and things like that. And they had a good presence at that time. They went away and they came back roughly 2011 with a tier four interim engine. That turned into a tier four final engine in 2014. And there's all kinds of manufacturers bringing those engines over here in their equipment. It's the engine of choice for many of the European built equipment that comes to North America. So a lot of people think that Scania's won't meet North American emissions. Will they? Will a Scania 770 meet emission standards if we put this into our truck? Absolutely, yeah. They've gone through all the same certification tests that any other engine manufacturer in North America has gone through. They have their tier four final certification on their nine liter, 13 liter and 16 liter. The whole product line that comes over here meets tier four final. So there we go. It's legal to put a Scania in a truck in Canada and sell it in Canada and the US. So absolutely. That's not a concern. Another worry then that we get is parts and service. They say that's a European engine. How are you going to find parts? Like how is your customer going to get find parts and how are they going to get that engine serviced over here? That's a common question. In Red Deer alone, we have a couple million dollars with a Scania product. We have roughly 30 dealers in Western Canada that house parts, support the product. And if that doesn't work in Jeffersonville, Indiana, 98% of every part on a Scania engine is housed in that warehouse. To date, we've never not been able to meet an overnight parts request from any dealer or end user. So in how many years you've never met an overnight? So in, since 2011, you've never not once got a part to a guy overnight. Correct. As long as the guy is willing to pay some air freight, we can get those parts overnight. Most of the time we have it in stock in Red Deer. So there you go. Parts is not a concern. Service is not a concern. There's people all over here. You've got customers that are buying Scanias and putting them into their applications. They're having no problem. Absolutely, yeah. No issues at all. 
In our Red Deer facility, we provide factory Scania training. I'm one of the trainers and all our dealerships have service techs that are factory Scania trained so they can support them in the field. So what kind of equipment in North America is running Scania motors right now? Because that's one of the things we hear while well, Scania is not over here. There are things over here though, right? Oh, tons of them. It's kind of an A to Z sort of thing. So the equipment that we work on or that we support, we've got DMAG cranes that run down the road. We have Oshkosh airport equipment. We have uh, Doosan equipment. We have Hyundai equipment. There's Pluger and DeWolf potato harvesters over here. We have a line of agri-green hay dryers drying hay over here. Uh, in the service rig world, we've been looking at it. We've put them into snubbing units. We've got them in water pumps that are working in the fracking industry. Um, you name it, and we've seen them in there. And now, soon to be Edison trucks. Soon to be Edison trucks. So a lot of people think that because you're going to the 770, you're going to be burning a lot more fuel being the bigger engine. How does that fuel consumption actually compare to the smaller 500s? In our experience, um, if you're comparing it to a smaller Scania 500, it is going to burn more fuel. But we have found that when you're comparing that 770 horse Scania to some of the North American manufactured stuff that would be up in that 650, 700 horsepower, or even the 500 horsepower, you're going to be more comparable with the 500 horse equipment. You know, honestly, I've always been a big proponent of that because I think that if you put a bigger engine with bigger horsepower, you're not working it as hard. So you get your bigger engine, work easier, gets better fuel mileage than a smaller engine matted right to the floor all day. There's definitely an argument to be made for that. We have seen engines that are worked right to the max start to lose efficiency and, and you, you don't have that efficiency, especially long term. They are a very fuel efficient engine. We've had them right up against some C18s. Um, we've had two engines side by side doing the exact same amount of work in the course of a day. And we've seen as, up, as much as 40% fuel savings over some of those bigger engines. And so we have found that long term, the fuel efficiency does always pay off. So the 770 going, like you said, they were on a drilling rig or, or service rig, but the 770 burned 30, 40% less fuel than the C18. In that scenario, we had uh, we had a little bit smaller. We did have a 13 liter Scania right next to a CAT. And with this exact same amount of work, the way the torque curves work and the efficiency of the engine, we found that they didn't burn near as much fuel as the cat right beside them. And with the emission system, so with the tier four final, the Scania doesn't have a DPF, so it doesn't need to ever do any regen, right? That's correct, yeah. So one of the big reasons that we had chose Scania for our service rigs was because they don't have a DPF. So they have no need for an exhaust filter, which means they don't have to do the regen process to blow out the exhaust filter. I know that's a lot. Uh, we hear that so many times. The reason why people really hate it besides just having to buy DPF or add blue. One of the reasons they hate the emissions is that that particulate filter clogs up and needs to go into a region. Scania just deleted it. They got rid of it completely and they're able to meet the emissions without needing to do any region, burns, filters to clean. So it's a much more efficient system all in all. And I'm sure that leads to some fuel mileage increase because you don't have the DPF. So with the emission systems that we have with the Scania engines, we have found to be very trouble free. Um, what we've noticed is the emission systems that are required in Europe tend to happen, the requirements happen before they happen in North America, which means when we bring a European engine to North America, the technology in the emission system already has years in service versus the North American engines, they're just starting out. So they're 10, so Scanny is 10 years ahead of us. So that means that they've already had an extra 10, 15 years to figure out these problems, fix them, and do things like completely delete the DPF. So what are the next steps right here? Our engineers have been, you sent over the 3D files. Um, we've got all the 3D files. We placed it into the truck, it fits. We're doing all the mounts. We're just making sure that all the hoses. Once that works, what are the next steps for certifying one of these trucks to have this? Yeah, so we have a good detailed process that we've been through many times. Um, essentially what happens is we share that 3D model with you guys. It's a completely accurate 3D model. So you're not going to have any issues on install. We're going to work with your engineers to make sure the emission system is put together properly. And then we're going to come here. We're going to send one of our trained application engineers to your facility. They're going to go through the whole install with you and make sure that every part of that engine is exactly how it needs to be so that you have no downtime and no issues in the future. Nice. And then, yeah, you're going to help us out. I'm sure we have all of the files, but we'll need like 
RPM signals, be able to control the throttle, get all the sensor data into our operation system. That's all easy to do, eh? Yeah, that's no problem. For the most part, it's all CAN bus. So we'll work with you on what all those CAN signals are, make sure you're sending the right ones, make sure that the engine's gonna perform properly for you, and make sure that we have all of the programming inside the engine set up so it works with your system. Perfect. I'm excited for this. You have no idea how excited I am. I think this is gonna be an awesome step. We've already got some customers super interested in this that are probably gonna take a couple of these. Can't wait to build this thing. All right, one of the things I gotta give a big compliment out to is Scania. So I went over to Europe with them. If you might've seen that video where we're talking about the engine, loved it, looked in more and into it, reach out to the contact I had. They sent it off and I kid you not, I sent that email off on a Friday night they looked at it in Europe on a Monday morning. Within four hours into Monday, I think it was like 11 o'clock in the morning, I was getting a phone call, said, hey, I got the email. We had a talk. Three hours after that, I had the 3D files of the engine in our computer where our guys were able to go through it, place it in there. And then within one week after that, once we put it in there, looked at the specs, I had an invoice on my desk ready to go buy this engine. That is unbelievable service we've dealt with other suppliers where it can take three to four months just to get the 3d files get a hold of people or we've had a ton of suppliers not going to name any names but they basically said we're not even going to sell you anything unless you're willing to buy at least 1,000 of these or at least 100 engine like we're not going to you were not interested in selling to anybody small that was not the case here the service was amazing fantastic and that's the kind of business that i love to do because if we're going to bring manufacturing back to north america we need to have these kind of businesses supporting each other because we lost our manufacturing if we're going to get started again we got to start out it doesn't matter how small you are because you can grow into a bigger company and companies like that that support the little guys are always going to be the ones that i'm going to support when i'm getting product and that's i mean that is what we do we want to be there for the journey to get you from the small guy to the big guy we want to be a part of that if you're a big company or a small company, we're gonna be there, we're gonna support you, we're gonna do whatever it takes. You wonder why guys are fans of Scania so much. <laughs>